Russell's paradox. Once upon a time, mathematicians got a wee bit carried away playing with sets. And they came up with things like the universal set was the set of all sets. They tried to work with all of the sets all at the same time. Okay, so now one weird thing about this is that if we're going to say that u is a set, this means that u is in u, right? Because if it's a set of all sets and it is itself a set, it is inside of itself. And this is a little bit weird because sometimes we imagine a set as sort of like a duffel bag stuffed with the elements. The order doesn't matter if you are naming the things in your bag and you name one of them several times, it doesn't matter. But this means that if the duffel bag is the set of all sets, then the duffel bag itself has to be one of the many, many, many things inside of the duffel bag. This is rather weird. It would be very hard to do that in real life, but, well, mathematicians thought that maybe you could do this with mathematical objects. Now, most sets, I hope you realize, don't have this property. Take the set B, containing 1, 4, 7, and 9. It has four elements. 1, 4, 7, and 9, and that's it. 1 is in B, and 7 is in B, but the whole set containing 1, 4, 7, and 9 is not one of those four things. It's not 1, it's not 4, it's not 7, it's not 9. Now this thing could be in a set. We could have a set that had it like C. C consists of four different things. The first thing is 5, the second thing is 8, the third thing is the set containing 1, 4, 7, and 9, and the fourth thing is 9. It has four things and the set containing 1, 4, 7, and 9 is one of those four things. The way we've listed it, it's the third one. But even in this case, even in this case, C is not in C. This whole thing is not one of the four things. And if you think about it, there's no way you could write out in a finite amount of space a set that did contain itself. Anyway, but we could, using set builder notation, refer to such an object. We could say D is, is the set of all sets such that the set has infinitely many elements. And if you think about it, this set D will itself have infinitely many elements. Think of the set 1, 2, 3, 4 going on forever. There's more than a finite number of things in that. That's an infinite set. How about the set 2, 3, 4 going on forever? Well, that's also an infinite set, and it's different than this first one. For two sets to be the same, they have to have exactly the same elements. This one has one, this one doesn't, then they're different. This one, 3, 4, 5 going on and on forever. Oh, that one's different too. It doesn't have two, so it's not this one. It doesn't have one, it's not this one. It's a totally new set. It's infinite. We can do this forever. The, we can easily come up with an infinite number of infinite sets. And because D has an infinite number of infinite sets, D is itself infinite. And therefore, D is one of these infinite sets. So if you want to put together all of the infinite sets into a duffel bag, when you were done stuffing the bag, you would have to put the bag into itself or a copy of the bag. But this gets a little bit difficult. And you will see what happens. So fine, some sets are elements of themselves, u is an element of u, and d is an element of d, and other sets are not. c is not an element of c, uh, b is not an element of b, so what? So what's so bad about this? Well, back in 1903, a mathematician and slash philosopher, logistician, named Bertrand Russell found a flaw in this reasoning. He said, if we can put together all of the sets in the entire universe into a set called U, why can't we put together a set of all the sets that are not elements of themselves? We want to collect all the things like B and C and not the things like U and D. We want the set of all the sets that are not elements of themselves. And it doesn't take very long to write this sort of thing. There it is. This is the set he talked about. The set is defined to be the set of all sets A such that A is not in A. So we want some sets in it and not others. And as we said, okay, U, the universal set, contains itself and therefore it doesn't have this property so it doesn't get to belong to S. Fine. B 
defined earlier, the set with four elements in it, is not one of its elements, and therefore it satisfies the one requirement. If you are not an element of yourself, you get to be an S. If you are an element of yourself, then you don't get to be an S. That's the rule. Fine. So, S consists of B and C and, well, who knows how many other things. But what we want to know is, is S somewhere on this list? Is S one of the sets that is inside of itself? Well, think about it. If S were, if S were somewhere in this list, then that would mean it would have to be in the set. It would have to satisfy everything. Is it a set? Yes, it's a set. If it's in itself, it has to have this property. It has to not be in itself. So if S is in itself, it must satisfy the one requirement for being an S. It must not be in itself. And if you think about it, we can't have both of these at the same time. You can't be in something and not in it at the exact same time. We only allow sets which are well-defined. And that means there has to be a clear procedure for figuring out whether or not something is an element or not. We don't know whether S is or isn't in S. That causes problems. So we have problems if we say that S is in S. Fine. Well, then let's say that S is not in S. If S is not in S, then it satisfies the one and only one thing that you have to do to be an S. S satisfies the one requirement for being an S. It doesn't contain itself. And that it means it's not an element of itself. That means it qualifies. It is one of these things. S is in S. We have the exact same problem as before. We have S in S. S not in S, S is in S. So whether S is in itself or is not in itself, we end up with a contradiction. And this means that something wrong is going on. And therefore, this is known as Russell's paradox. We will talk about its, its the implications in the next video.